I understand your question completely and very clearly. I just don't know how to validate it. Do you, do you, what did they do? They thought it was glycol. They thought it was glycol. Oh, they thought it was glycol. How would they, what did they say they did to treat for the glycol? They said they treated it. They didn't say specifically how they treated it. So I want to know. To absorb the glycol? So they added more chemicals to the clock. See, this is the type of thing that... Maybe they didn't know exactly what was in that tank, or so I don't know. They wouldn't... They told us it was a flocculant. A flocculant, okay. So they added more flocculant. To, they probably made the problem worse. Well, they... they of course. I was out Thursday evening for maybe half an hour, and my eyes were burning, they were itching, they were terribly irritated. They said, oh, this stuff isn't gonna bother your eyes. And I'm thinking, well, something's bothering my eyes. So whatever they did while they were trying to solve the problem that had been misidentified to them, I wonder, could that have put off other vapors? Could that have caused yes. other problems? Yes. We're making a mess. Yes. Yes to all of that. Because what happens is, is you, you adjust the pH and the chemical behaves differently. You adjust the temperature and the chemical behaves differently. You oxidize it with chlorine and the chemical behaves differently. And so, yes, all of those things could have caused more off-gassing. This was a foaming agent that they added flocculant to. What that probably did, I, don't, I would have loved to have seen the treatment plant. It probably foamed up like a, somebody put too much bubble bath in the bubble bath. Um, that, that would be my guess as to what happened. I mean, the, don't let them tell you one part per million is a low level. They're feeding flocculant at two parts per million. I mean, that's a, that's a heavy dose in the water industry. It is not slight. And so they probably made it worse. So my second question that I think that you, that's outside your area of expertise, but it's just something that I keep wondering about, is um, these tanks were located a mile and a half approximately from the intake for our water <coughs> They're right below our airport. The Homeland Security people have gotten tons of money to, to uh, protect us. And I'm, I just keep wondering, how come somebody didn't say, oh, look, you have huge tanks of, of industrial chemicals that are located right below your airport and right near your water intake for your treatment plant. Oh, um, so I know that that's probably not a question in your area of expertise, but it's one that I keep wondering about. Yeah. Uh, it's not my area of expertise, but the fact that there was no knowledge of what was stored there and how it was being handled. What yes, happened to yes, Dual Wall? In February but, of last year, uh -huh. this company filed and told our, our government here what well, was there. Yes. The paper reported that, that in February of last year, Freedom Industries filed with the EPA or whoever and told them what they were going to have there. So they knew it was there. Well, and when I find the water, um, source water protection program that's available to y'all, you have to call to get it. But once we get it, I'm going to see if those chemicals are identified in that plan. If they're not, it's a fatal flaw in the protection plan. Who's Call supposed to catch that? I mean, who's supposed to be the one? Is that the EPA that's supposed to be out there, or is it our city and local government that's supposed to be out there? It's, well. it's, there's a state engineer that's assigned to West Virginia American Water Company. It's the Fox starting the hen house. Yeah. It's the one that's doing that. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go, there you go. That's exactly if you go to West Virginia Amer American Water Company, there's probably former regulators working at the treatment plant, and there's probably former treatment plant guys working for the state. I mean, that's not uncommon. Oh. My question is, first of all, would you tell us your name again? Oh, I'll give you cards, too, when you get ready to leave. But it's Bob. Last name is B-O-W-C-O-C-K. Now, my question is, as a community, how can we form a group that can ask these questions for other people in the community we don't want a politician doing it. Nope. We don't want anybody. We want regular people like, like me and Miss Hattie over here yeah. that will go in and go, wait a minute, I don't understand what that means. Yeah. So that they have to answer us and we can report back to our communities. Mm -hmm. How yes. do they do that? That's an excellent question.
and that's how you will effectively make change. And I'm going to tell you a model community that we're working with in Carson, California. Shell Oil had a tank farm, and the fox that was guarding that hen house didn't bother to tell all of the overseers we got a big leak going on, so it just happened. Now they've got this huge benzene soil plume underneath their community. Their children cannot even go outside and play in the backyard because they will be poisoned by benzene. This community was like you, and they were fed up. I sat there and I watched this unfold, and it was one of the proudest moments of my life. You know what they did? They showed up in force at a city council meeting. Thousands of them. The look on the city council members' face was priceless. It was a total, what the fuck is going on? Nobody comes to these meetings. If nobody comes to these meetings, nobody must care. And they showed up in force. They now have the attention of city council. That attention got the attention of the mayor. The mayor has now stepped in and taken their back, and now effective steps are happening to rectify the situation. You guys can make that difference. Don't think that you can't. And this is something I talk to communities about all the time. We don't show up because what? We're not the scientist. We're not the doctor. We're not the politician. 